Oh, guys, I've never spoke on YouTube like this. This is crazy. I currently own 23 HMOs in Nottingham. This, this is the most authentic YouTube channel that's related to properties. So who am I? My name is Luigi Newton. I'm a property developer from Nottingham and I started out with only £6,000 and now I own a property portfolio that's worth over £5.7 million. In this video, I want to tell you exactly how I've done it. I want to share my story, the ups and the downs, the good sides and the bad sides of property. So what was my kind of early years of my childhood like? For me, I was very entrepreneurial as a kid. I had lots of different businesses when I was very young. So when I was 12 years old, I was actually importing goods from China from a website called Alibaba. It's like a wholesale website. So I'd import goods, things like memory cards, new era hats, school candy earphones, Dr. Dre beats. I'd order them in in bulk and I would actually sell them in school and I'd sell them to the neighborhood. I realized I had my strong point, which was business. And I clocked that from the age of 12 years old. Doing all that stuff there, I learned how to negotiate from very young. I learned how to sell. That's kind of my early years. And one thing to mention as well, guys, I made my first 1,000 pounds when I was 12 years old. So I was very proud of that. And that stuck in my head, it really did. I was just cracking on, doing all these mini businesses. I was selling these New Era hats and New Era actually sent a letter to my family home. And basically the letter said that they're gonna take me to court because I've been selling counterfeit New Era hats. Now, if you don't know what New Era hats are, it's just the flat peak hats that were really popular when I was younger. But what happened was my dad literally gave them a call because it had a phone number on there for the solicitors. And he said, look, he's 13 years old. What should we do? <laughs> and basically at that point, they said, you need to return all of the hats that you've not sold. So I had to send like 300 hats that I had in my stockpile, sent them back to New Era and they dropped the charges. I ended up getting permanently expelled from school. And then um, I got my mom permanently barred from PayPal because I was using her PayPal account and do feel guilty that I wasn't a good son. I've actually got dyslexia. It made me feel dumb because keep in mind guys, I'm a middle child. When your big brother and your little sister is getting like straight A's, they're killing it in school, you can really feel a bit dumb. So I really did not feel like I fitted in. So I very much felt lost as a kid. I felt like the whole world was against me. I don't know if this was just like a teenage kind of thing, but I just felt like Everyone was out to get me. Everyone was trying to fight me. I had really bad anxiety as a kid. My mum is a teacher in a primary school. 30, 40 years, she worked her way up from a teacher to a head teacher. She came from a really bad neighborhood in Sunderland, which is in the Northeast of England, where funny enough, lots of people start buying properties now because they're so cheap there. But it's really beat down, guys. It's a real like bad neighborhood. She grew up there. No one else went to university from her neighborhood, except from her. So she kind of like made it out of that situation. I saw that from a young age and I thought, right, I need to work even harder than my mom. I knew that from very early on and my mom actually got married to my dad. They bought a property 25 years ago for 80,000 pounds. It's now worth 350,000 pounds, guys, as a kid. And I can remember just thinking, that's a lot. Because I was running all of these little mini businesses, it stuck in my head. I was like, wow, so they've just made like what? 320,000 pounds from just owning a property. And that's when I realized, guys, that there's something to it. But I didn't think too much about it. So I think now, in my older years, I'm actually trying to give back to my mum. That's definitely one of my main driving forces is making my family proud. I do think one of my deep-rooted motivations is about providing value. Being a strong person for my family, financially strong, physically strong, mentally strong. Someone that is there for them and can actually provide and protect. I was I had two best friends that I'd grown up with my whole life. They went to jail for a very long time. They went to prison. I won't get into what happened, but it was like a fight and basically somebody passed away and then they went to prison for 17 years. So in a nutshell, my two best friends went to jail. That was the most crazy experience. My heart was pumping out my chest. Anyway, I went to the doctors. The doctor basically said, what's happened in your life? I said, look, this is what's happened. She was like, okay, basically we think it's just stress and anxiety of what's happened. So that was like a pivotal moment in my life. It was either gonna go two ways. I ever thought to myself, right, Luigi, you're gonna go down that path as well, or you can become something with yourself. You can make something from your life. So what I actually did was I started doing kickboxing. This is how crazy I was. I thought I'm gonna become the UFC champion of the world. <laughs> I went for it, I started doing kickboxing linked up with this guy called Paul Daly who runs Spirit Dojo Gym. He's actually a very good professional fighter and he's actually, he was coaching people and training people, he still does. And he was actually taught me everything I know about kickboxing. 
and then I did six amateur fights. Now this actually helped me massively in life. I was focusing on something positive, push myself past my limits. I got humbled down because when I went to that gym, I thought, oh, I'm the hardest guy. Guess what? My first sparring session, Paul actually knocked me out. He was like this, bang, gave me an uppercut, solar plex or something, and boom, I was on the floor, knocked out. That was very humbling. And from there, I kind of realized that yeah, Luigi, you're not um, as tough as you thought, mate. Through those three or four years that I was doing the kickboxing, I was leveling up, I was becoming stronger, I was having to do the weight cuts, showing up to fight people that were like 10 years older than me. I was only like 18, 19, 20 when I was doing this. But then I realized it was on my like sixth fight, number six. After that, I just literally said, Luigi, what do you actually want from life? Do you want to be a professional fighter? Or what is it that you want? So I just really deeped it and I realized I want money. So this was where the big change happened. I literally completely quit kickboxing. I had people at my gym saying, oh, Luigi's a quit or rare, rare, rare. I just thought, you know what? It's my life, I do what I want to do. Basically wealthy. That's what I was trying to become is wealthy and rich. And I was thinking, what can I do? What can I do? And then it clicked to me. My mom made so much money from her property that she bought 25 years ago for 25 grand. Now it's worth like 350 grand. I need to do that. But guess what? I need to get 10 of them. I started studying property. Then I realized because I was self-employed doing the support work, I couldn't get a mortgage. So what I actually did was I went out there and I found the most stable job with the best salary that I could get. Now, because I had no qualifications, I had very minimal qualifications, should I say. So I had to go for a sales job. I was working as in a call center, selling insurance for people's Sky equipment. So like their Skybox, their TV. Honestly, we was doing so many calls, back to back calls, getting rejected, getting shut down. I think because I'd had the kickboxing experience, it made me very mentally tough. So for me, it was like, it's light work, getting shut down, getting rejected, I don't care. I'm literally take it on the chin, boom, next call, next call, sale, sale. And I can remember going into that call center and saying to myself, Luigi, become the best sales rep you can become. So I'd go there every single day and my goal was to be the top seller. I made some good friends there, had some good laughs, and you know what? I just enjoyed it. Some people come to me saying they hate the nine to five job. But you know what? I actually like mine, mine was all right. But the reason I worked that job was so I could get a mortgage. I was learning sales skills. I was now mortgageable because all you need is three months pay slips in order to be mortgageable for a residential mortgage. So alongside me working in the call center, I basically saved up 6,000 pounds. And then what I did was I actually borrowed 6,000 pounds from like friends, family, different people that I know. So I put it all together and I had 12,000 pounds. And that was enough for me to get my first property. If you're looking for a mortgage broker, then check out my guys at Mortgage Style. They're the best in the game. I've been working with them for over five years. And honestly, I've had five brokers tell me no and mortgage style tell me yes links in the description check them out so my first property was 125,000 pounds that was the purchase price but guys before i found my first property i actually viewed between 30 and 40 houses i was very picky with what i was buying for my first house the reason being is because i did all that studying whilst i was saving up for about a one year period it allowed me to understand something called BMV, which is below market value, is essentially when you buy a property for less than it's actually worth. So that's what I did. I was on the hunt for a below market value property. I realized that you have to sometimes find desperate sellers that are in need to sell their house quickly and fast. So I found a property after doing load of viewings, found this one house, it was listed for 150 and I actually managed to secure it for 125,000 pounds by making a low ball offer. So I started off at about 120. We ended up buying and agreeing on it for 125. So I put down 10% deposit, which was 12 and a half grand. And then I scraped together a few more thousand pounds to pay the solicitors. There was zero stamp duty because it was my first property. I purchased the property. I did a zero refurb to it. I lived in one of the rooms and I rented out three of the spare rooms. Now I made so many mistakes, guys. I managed the property myself. I did it all backwards. I didn't have the right contracts. I was not doing things in the correct way, but it worked. I made cash flow and I was now earning 500 pounds profit and living for free. So my whole financial situation changed because before I bought this first house, I was living in an apartment in the city center of Nottingham, paying like 
450 pounds in rent and then like 300 pounds in bills. So I was getting my paycheck every month, which was around 1,600 pounds. Then I was having to pay out like eight, 900 pounds straight away for my apartment. So I was really scraping and it was hard to save. So now when I got my first house, now I'm living for free because the rent's covering me and I'm now making 500 pounds profit. I'm still getting my 1,600 pounds wage. I immediately felt the change in my pocket when I got my first property. And guys, it was the best thing I could have done. So glad I did it. It was one of those where I was sacrificing my apartment because obviously it's nice having your own apartment and living in the city center. It was a nice one as well, but I sacrificed it and rented out the spare room. For me, it wasn't ideal. I didn't really enjoy living with people that much, but I did it for the longer and greater good. So because I purchased this property below market value, it was worth around 150,000 pounds. And what I actually did was I refinanced the property. So I waited about a year and I refinanced the property for its true value, which was 150,000 pounds. So I did that and I was able to pull out around 18,000 pounds, which I used that 18,000 pounds on the refinance. I used that towards my next property purchase. Now with my next one, I had 18,000 pounds. My next property, I bought it for 101,000 pounds. Again, below market value. So I did my first two purchases were definitely below market value. And I'd literally go on again, another 10, 20, 30 viewings if I had to, to find the right deal. So I did that, found my second property, which was 101,000 pounds, bought it again using a 10% deposit. Few people say, how did you do that? How did you get two residentials? Guess what? You can definitely do two residential mortgages. You just have to make sure you get consent to let on the first one and you have to meet the affordability. But because these houses were super cheap and I'm still working full time, still got my decent wage, earning about 26 grand a year, I was able to meet affordability to have both of the houses. I was literally studying every single night, guys. I had a girlfriend at the time and I remember just thinking to myself, Luigi, prioritize your studying. This needs to work, fuck everything else. And now I know that sounds crazy, guys, but I had that extreme urgency to say, right, this is my chance. I've got to go all in and I've got to be obsessed with this. So that's exactly what I did, guys. I was obsessed with property and I really like studied hard like a madman every single night. And I was learning about the different strategies such as how to work with investors, how to JV with people. So I realized the only way I'm going to actually get investors on board is if I jump onto social media. Then I really started enjoying the creative process of doing the vlogs and doing the before and afters and it eventually got more fun. Um, I do love YouTube, I'm not gonna lie. The other platforms, I'm not so keen, but I love YouTube. You can actually scroll down and you can see me standing outside of this house explaining about the property that I was about to buy. So I had enough to buy the deposit and some of the refurb, but I just needed some more money to do, to do the rest of the refurb. So I had around 18,000 pounds plus a couple grand saving. So I had about 21, 22,000 pounds but I needed roughly around 35,000 pounds to do the whole deal. But in a nutshell, guys, I've raised investment from my very early YouTube videos, okay? So this is how important social media has been as a part of my journey. Someone dropped me a message, they've ended up investing 8,000 pounds. Then a few months later, they put in another 5,000 pounds. So I was pretty much there. I had the investment, I had what I needed, and it was go time. So I bought the second house, refurbished it, and I actually refinanced the property for 150 or 155, refinanced the property, pulled out another chunk of money, and then I used that for my third deal. And then I got more investors on board. I got more people trying to work with me. So what I would do is I'd borrow funds from an investor and it's something called the fixed return model. So they put in say 8,000 pounds and they get a one year contract. After the year, I pay them back their money plus 10% interest. So I was doing that very small scale but then on my third deal I started to step it up a bit I had someone put in 20,000 pounds I had someone put in 15,000 so it was slowly getting bigger and bigger but I was always conscious to never over leverage I didn't want to take on too much investment I did that I'm on my deal number three same process but then I started getting into HMOs so the first two I was running them as like multi-let properties I messed up majorly because they was in article 4 areas so I later sold those properties off from my portfolio, but essentially my next ones were official HMOs. And this was the game changer because 
the seventh wonder of the world is something called a commercial valuation, which I love is where the valuer will come out and value a HMO or a commercial building based on the income that it's producing. So that means you can buy a property, convert it into a HMO, get a commercial valuation on it, and you can pull out a lot of money on the refinance. Sometimes we pull out all of our initial investment, which I've done several times, and that is the perfect scenario for what I do. But guys, that's kind of how I got the ball rolling. And then when I was on my like fourth deal, I pitched to somebody about a JV, a joint venture. When I pitched that, I didn't even think they was gonna go ahead. But I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna try it. I pitched to them, I said, look, you fund 100% of the refurb. I literally jumped on a call with them. They reached out to me through Instagram. It was actually a, a musician that reached out. He said he'd been on these training courses and he was about to buy a single let in cash for 60 grand. I says, whoa, 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 why are you gonna do that? I said, you would make more money doing a JV with me. Gave him some potential figures. And then I said to him, if you fund 100% of the deal, I'll find the deal, I'll manage the full refurbishment, I'll manage the whole process from start to finish. I'll do all the work, all you need to do is fund it. We'll open a new company together. You be a director, I'll be a director, we'll be 50-50 shareholders. And guess what? He said, yeah. So spoke to his mom, spoke with him, got on really well with them, met up with them as well in person. And we closed the deal guys. And we actually bought um, a really good property, which was direct to landlord. It was probably my best property yet. We bought it for 170,000. We spent 60,000 pounds on it and it got valued at 335. So it was an all money out deal. So that really catapulted me to get more joint ventures on board. I've recorded the whole thing on YouTube. You can find that video of that deal right here. So right now, guys, I currently own 23 HMOs in Nottingham. The two properties that I bought, my first two, I sold them off and I reinvested the capital into more HMOs. So the 23 properties I own, roughly about four of them are just me and the rest are joint ventures. This strategy for me is what has allowed me to scale up my property journey. That's my story, guys. That's about me and that's how I've done it. The plans are going forward is to keep on going, keep on buying. I'm trying to buy roughly around 17 more this year. But guys, hopefully this video has allowed you to get to know me a bit more. So if you're interested in working with myself on one of my property projects, you want to team up with me or you want to invest with me, all you need to do, guys, is click on the link in my description of this video and you can click on the button which says JV with Luigi. Click on that, you can book a call and we'll have a call and see if we can work together. Hope you've enjoyed this vid. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you all very soon.